Hello and welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial we will going to continue with where we last left off. In the last tutorial we learned how you can add something to a library list and this allows you to be able to put that in your library list. And you can see that by issuing the command display library list which is dsplibl. Now comes a question if I'm searching for an item how does the IBM system searches for that item? First of all, if the name of the object that you're looking for is a qualified name, what does that mean? That means an object name is preceded by the library. Then it doesn't matter if the library is in the library list or not. As long as you have the right of ownership to it, it will still be able to locate it if you have access to that object in your library. So it checks a lot of things. It just makes sure that you have access to the library, and it also makes sure you have access to the object, and checks your permissions on the command that you're issuing on the object, if you are, if it is okay for you to ex execute that command on that object. So it does all sorts of checks. Anywhere it fails, it just simply tells you that you can't do this. So if you do not provide a qualified name for the object, that means if you only provide a name of the object and do not provide the name of the library, then it first goes through the system libraries. You can have up to 15 system libraries. Once it's done with that, then it checks your current library. Uh, you can only have one current library. And then followed by your user libraries, which you can have up to 255 user libraries. So each library can have a collection of objects. You're not limited to one or two or three. You have unlimited number of objects you can place in the library. So it, this is how it searches. So wherever it finds the first match, that's exactly what it does. It executes it. And if there are any other matches in any other libraries, in your library list, it will not going to find them and run them because you have provided a not qualified name. This was not a fully qualified name, which means you only provided the name of the object and you did not provide the name of the library with it. So in order for me to, in this, in this particular tutorial, we're going to be learning how you can change your current library. If you do not provide a current library, then your current library becomes the QGPL, which is the IBM supplied current library. IBM libraries start with the letter Q, so just remember, never ever create a library that starts with the letter Q. So here I have a library, which is currently my current library, and I would like to change that with books LIB17. I will going to issue a command called change current library, which is change current library, and I will going to press F4. Now this asks me, which library would you like me to promote to the current library? So I'll say, okay, in books, LIB 17, and I'm going to press enter. It'll say, current library has been changed to that. Let me check to see if it, if it really has happened. So I was going to issue the command display, library list, and I'll press enter. And here you can see that the books library 17 has two entries, one as a current library and one as a user library. So if I ever change books library 17, from my current library status, it will still stay in my library list because I have it in my user library as well as my current library. So now let's F3 out of here and let's try to change our library back to the way it was before. So change current library F4, the old library which, which was my previous library and I'm going to press enter. And now I will going to display my library list. And here you can see that the current library has been changed back to what was before. So this is how you can change your current library to any library that you have access to. It does not have to be in your library list. As long as you have rights to it, you can do that. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Catch you in the next one.